Look at here what I made. You want to guess what it's called? <laughs> this is called cornbread cake. It is so good. A friend of mine gave me the recipe. She called it Georgia cornbread cake. But let me tell you something. It's real good right here in Alabama. And I want you to stay tuned and make you some because it's so easy. Today at home with Miss Joan, we're going to make cornbread cake. You heard me right. I said we're going to have cornbread. Now, my cornbread recipe is already on my channel. But this is cornbread cake. And you get to use self-rising flour in this. Most of the cakes that you make will call for a plain flour, or what's known as a cake flour, which is real fine, fine sifted. But this right here is just, I'm going to use my self-rising a white lily flour. And a tip that I do, I, I already told you I love these buckets. I just cut the, the paper off of the sack and tape it on here. Actually, it's covered in plastic and taped on here. I got the recipe for my biscuits on the top in case I go blank one morning. Can't remember how to throw them together. Got the recipe for my biscuits on here because I just whipped these two uh, breads up really quick. And all those are on the channel. But anyway, self-rising now. So it's just something you're going to have in your cabinet, all right? It calls for a cup and a half self-rising flour. All right, there's a cup. Let me go down here and get me a half. Cup and a half. It says sifted. I'm not going to sift it, okay? <laughs> this flour right here is really probably already well sifted. Now, I'm going to use two different kinds of sugar in this. It calls for a cup of white sugar, regular sugar. Again, there's my handy dandy way I keep up with it. Y'all can see, I, it'd be prettier if I'd level it off with a knife, but I'm just leveling it off with my finger. All right, I got a cup of white sugar, and we're also going to put a cup of brown sugar. This is a half cup measure, so I have to do two of these. It says to pack it down. Now, the recipe that I have calls for dark brown sugar. Well, I don't have in this bucket here. This looks more like a medium brown or a light brown. There's a half. Packing it down like it says to do. And hold. I'm just kind of stirring it up, kind of blending in my sugar and my flour together. And next, it's going to call for four eggs. Oh, me, uh, my daughter had a friend at school that gave us some of his eggs <laughs> from his chickens right out in his backyard. And boy, I have really enjoyed using these. Okay, calls for four. Sometimes if I don't line them up straight, I forget my numbers. But I am going to check them before I put them in there. I guess I ought to trust the homegrown eggs more than do the default ones, but they say they look through all of them through a special light. But I don't know. But anyway, I am looking, looking at each one. In case they say anything funky, I put in three. Look at here. Every one of them is a different color. <laughs> Beige, dark brown, and green. It's the second time he's given me some of these. I'm telling you what's true. Other than I dropped an eggshell in here. They all look fine. I got it out. All right. Now I need a teaspoon of vanilla. Here it is. You can get out your teaspoon and measure it. I use my cap on this particular kind I got right here. Okay. Teaspoon of vanilla. Now it takes a cup of oil. I'm going to use my vegetable oil. I, I buy the Wesson, Wesson brand. But I need a cup. All right, there it goes. I'm just stirring this up with a spoon. Now I've got my hand mixer on standby in case I'm not strong enough to get it done because it's fixing to get a little thicker. See how easy I've done all this in one bowl. We're gonna add two cups of pecans. Uh, one of the tips that I do in my kitchen, I always get out my little chopper and I chop me up a big bowl of pecans and I keep them froze frozen, and then I just get them out whenever I need them. Most of my recipes call for chopped pecans, not whole or halves. There goes one, and here goes two. And that's everything that goes in this cake. 
you kind of bake it and let it cool and break it or cut it into little squares, kind of like you would brownies. And it, I guess it's called cornbread cake because of, see me stirring it up here? I guess it's called a cornbread cake because it's a kind of a coarse cake. And don't be afraid now when you put it in your pan and you go to cook it, that it rises up and then it falls. Okay, so, oh no, what have I done wrong? Yeah, done anything wrong. It's supposed to do that, okay? In fact, I'm gonna put it in a greased 9 by 13 pan. Oh, this is a, oh, the pan's heavier than the cake. My cousin Sheila gave me a whole set of these. I got two of these, and then I got a couple more divides in the little sections. And she don't realize what she got rid of because I am loving these things. I really am. Okay, I'm going to coat it good with nonstick spray. But I'll call for all this fumes. Well, we didn't even have to get out my mixer, did we? Sometimes I have to just because my hands aren't as strong as they used to be. But here it goes. Cornbread cake. Don't uh, say, whew, I'm not watching that. I'm not going to try to make it. Cornbread cake sounds awful. You'll be surprised. If you're having some people over for just coffee, whew, this little dish right here and a cup of coffee, so good. Good with a glass of milk. It's just good. It freezes good, too. I did this a while back when we were planning, having some meetings for my class reunion. And I cooked this ahead of time because I was real busy. I was going to be real busy when they come. Froze it. Got it out. Tastes just like it would the day I made it. Okay, I'm going to put this in the oven. I'm going to bake it 35 to 40 minutes. I'll get back when you show you. Cornbread cake. Bake, uh, mine baked 35 minutes on 350 degrees. And see what how I, you can tell that it kind of sunk in just a little bit. Like I told you it was going to do. And remember now, you'll think, oh my goodness. What in the world is this thing? It's so almost, see, as I'm going around trying to just trim it out, it feels a little crunchy. Well, I don't know about you, when you go to eat your cornbread and you got a good piece of the edge of it, it's kind of crunchy. So I didn't want you to think, oh me, Miss John, mine flopped. No, it didn't, okay? I'm gonna cut us out a piece and uh, show it to you. This, this cooled for about, I guess, 20 minutes before I come back on here. That's why it's cutting out like this. And I'll, if you've ever done a lot of cooking like this, you know that first piece in the corner. He don't like to come out very good. <laughs> we'll see. All right. This is a good dish anytime, but it's also really good. Here now that it's fall. Now, I don't put an icing on mine, or frosting. We eat it just like this. Can you see it? See all the pecans and the brown sugars, what made it that color, and it's real juicy. See, it, it looks crunchy all around on the top, but in the inside, it's juicy. And uh, this is a quick stir it up. You don't mess up your kitchen. You just uh, stir it up, bake it for a few minutes, and eat it. Are y'all waiting on me to say, Preacher loves this. <laughs> I know, I was watching some of my videos and uh, every one of them might say, Preacher loves this. Well, I can't help it. He, he don't fuss about nothing. <laughs> he just eats it. I think I told y'all, except that one time that I made, was it enchilada? I, uh, I can't say it. Enchiladas. He did say, you don't have to make me this no more. <laughs> he loves sweets, so. All righty. Now, when you're cutting it, you uh, kind of do the, uh, I got a jagged knife, and I'm kind of sawing it, is my word, with the blades. It kind of helps it cut out a little better. If you've got a tip for how to cut them out where they look real pretty, get, tell me about it, because, man, I need to learn some more stuff myself. Like I said, it's a consistency of brownies, but the coarseness of it. I guess that's how it got its cornbread name. Well, here it is right here. <laughs> Look at that. This is my cornbread cake cut in little squares, ready to eat. You can freeze it for later. 
make an airtight container and open it up and, and thaw it out. It's just as fresh as ever. And you learned it right here today at At Home with Miss Joan. And would you remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up and the like and share it with your friends if you like it. Tell me if you make this, okay? It's so easy. Just a few ingredients. Most of them you already have in your cabinet. I'm going to sit down with a glass of milk and have me a piece of cornbread cake and enjoy every bite. Right here at At Home with Miss Joan. I'm going to sit down with a glass of milk and have me a piece of Georgia cornbread. <laughs> Georgia cornbread cake, ain't it? I got to just keep them and she tells me not to say I'm going after a rag, okay? <laughs> Heard it right here at At Home with Miss Joan. Whoa, whoa, you got an ugly rag in this shot.